and that is how to prevent ground loop issues. This is something that you normally don't consider unless you're very experienced with audio, especially live sound, but this goes with the recording studio as well. And it's an issue that I noticed. This is actually something that I planned last minute for this for this uh, live broadcast. And that's because I was watching a video that somebody made earlier in a studio. And all I could hear was that ground loop hum, that 60 hertz hum that comes up often during video productions in a studio. And this is how to prevent that issue. All right. So first of all, some of these are a little bit easier to do, but uh, some of them are a little bit harder. But if you just do all of them, if you run into issues, then you'll avoid ground loops and noise and buzz and all that. All right, so number one, plug everything into the same power strip. That will help tremendously. Number two, invest in a power conditioner. They are more expensive than your normal power strip, but they can make a big difference. All right. Number three, ground loops occur when there are multiple paths to the same ground. And for those of you not familiar with the way electric um, like circuit designs are made, ground is literally a stake a wire connected to a stake that goes into earth, as they say in yoga. <laughs> but no, they actually call it earth in electrical guides as well. But it's actually, it's literally touching dirt. And that's a safety mechanism. It's a safety, um, a safety, I don't know, whatever, a safety thing. <laughs> but um, <coughs> if you have multiple paths going to that ground, and in, in this case, when I ran into a problem recording, it was because I had the guitar amp plugged in to the outlet over there. I don't know if you can see my hand or not. And then I had the mixing board plugged in to the outlet over there. And then I have my audio interface plugged into the, uh, the outlet here. And of course, later on down the line, the direct box recorded a bunch of hum. And luckily I have tools that can get rid of that. But if that was live, that would have sounded absolutely horrible. The other issue I ran into was the amplifier itself had a fan, which <coughs> I don't know why. I don't know why they build fans into these high gain amplifiers. Like that is just, that's just, it'd be one thing if it wasn't an issue with electrical interference going on, but the design of the power amp just was not good. Like, and, and you heard ground, you heard the fan in the actual electric guitar signal. Like, how stupid is that? Anyway, um, avoid using extension cables. Yes. And, uh, especially very long ones. All right. Use better quality audio cables. I love Mogami. They're expensive, but they work. Avoid using connector converters. This might seem like an obvious one, but if if you're using, you know, like an XLR to quarter inch, or I have a quarter inch to RCA or an RCA to quarter inch, that's gonna present problems, possibly. So avoid that whenever possible. This is another important one. Use balance cables when you can. TRS, when it's quarter inch. XLR, if you're using a microphone. Uh, it, it can't be stated enough. When you mix unbalanced cables with balanced cables, that's where you run into issues sometimes. If you have cable TV or satellite TV equipment, Keep those away from your audio gear. Those RF cables, those fiber optic cables can cause issues that we don't even want to talk about. But that that's another thing to avoid 
if possible. And by the way, that includes internet. So anything involving cable TV, including internet, avoid having that cable near your audio gear. Okay. Now, here's some pr uh, problem-solving gear. DI boxes. Some of them have a ground lift switch, and they work really well. Um, another thing that you can do... Oops, wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. I had this out of order, unfortunately. Uh, look up this term on Google. It's called common impedance coupling. That'll give you some information about, this, uh, about solving these problems. Another source of noise comes from placing audio equipment too close to high current power supplies and cables. So in the, uh, in the case of television, you have these like 600 watt plus lights and power cables. If you have to run the cables next to each other, do a right angle. So, you know, you run the audio cable perpendicular to, I think that's the right word, to the power cable. But if you can avoid keeping the cables separate from each other, from having to lay over top of each other, do that. Avoid dimmer style light switches in your control room or your live room. Dimmer light switches, even if they're fully up, can cause problems. I don't know what the reason for that is, but that's that seems to be one of the things I heard people complaining about, or I was reading about people complaining about issues they were running into. Fluorescent lights may also cause issues with guitar pickups. Uh, I think humbuckers are fine. It's the single coils that typically have issues with fluorescent lights. All right, now here's some more gear. All right, I, I said the DI box, the direct input box, normally used for guitars, but you can also use it for uh, line level, I believe. I, I might be wrong about that. So actually, forget I even said that. <laughs> Instead, look into getting what's called audio isolation transformer products. Now they don't normally call them that. They're usually think uh, they usually call them things like a uh, hum reducer or hum eliminator or buzz off. Here's a, but I will actually name products that people say are good. Number one for XLR microphones. Sescom IL-19 or the ART, A-R-T, DTI is another good one. For quarter inch connectors, check out the Rocktron Buzzkill, the ART Clean Box, that's all one word, Clean Box, or the Rolls HE-18. All those products can help eliminate Issues with ground loops, hum, noise, etc., etc. Um, one other product to look into, and this is actually you would connect it uh, at your power outlet. It's the EBTEC E B T E C H Hum X filter. That's another product to look into. Finally, as a last resort, if you if none of this helps with your ground loop issues then you must get your electrical wiring changed to what's known as star grounding. And this is a subject that is way too complex to get into in this video. And <coughs> if I'm being honest, I don't know what I'm talking about anyway when it comes to star grounding, but an electrician would know what this is. Uh, essentially, it's running all the grounds right near each other at a central point. But like I said, don't quote me on that. You have to look into that more yourself. And that is a last resort thing. If you can avoid having to get an electrician to redo your wiring at your house or apart, well, apartments, they'll, they'll usually tell you to go screw yourself um, or, or condo or whatever, star grounding may be what you need but um again last resort so i hope that helps you guys the ground loops are an absolute bitch 
And that is how you can tame that bitch with all the suggestions I just said.